So um, this part says, um, I come against the prophets of doom and gloom. I say a golden age is coming to the church of the born again. The kingdom of God is not weak, and the kingdom of God is not poor. Amen. So you're going to have to tell people, this is speaking to Pastor Thomas Stella, as you have, that this is a false economy, that there's no shortage in the true economy. Can I say, I was looking at pictures of some of the treasures of diamonds in the Kremlin in Russia, and it, I mean, they have things made of pure jewels and gold, and I don't know how many millions and probably billions in that whole place, what it's worth. And I go, there's no shortage in this earth of wealth. It's just stored in the wrong places. Amen? Praise God. So you're going to tell people this is a false economy. There's no shortage in the true economy. You're going to have to inspire faith in them because once it catches on, it's going to start sucking the gold and silver out of the world system. So, Tom, you're going to have to make a decision right now. Is supernatural prosperity a problem for you? No, indeed. Money, 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 money. Why does that church always talk about money? Why don't churches talk about money? If I'm going to learn about money, let's learn about it in the church. Amen? <laughs> one word from heaven, one prophetic utterance can create a business. With a man who is destitute, he can go from poverty to penury to prosperity because he's taken heed to the living God who lives inside of you. You will speak out jobs. You will declare industries, and it will come to pass. As you continue to do this, it will multiply, and it will happen fast. Everywhere you two go, revivals will and are going to break out. A revival of souls and a revival of gold. Hallelujah. So, Father, we thank you for that word. You say to war a good warfare over the prophecies that you've given us. And, Lord, this is our ministry, the, our church, our pastors. We're connected. We thank you for revivals of souls and Faith Alive Fellowship. We thank you for revivals of souls everywhere Pastor Tom and Stella are sent. Revivals of gold, hallelujah, in here and other places to the outermost parts of the earth. We thank you for the businesses spoken by the Holy Ghost into existence and even industries. And we thank you for the wealth of the wicked being laid up for the just, Father God. And we believe we receive it, Father. So we can take the world for your name. In Jesus' name, amen. That's what it's all about, everybody. Praise you, Lord. We thank you, Father. Just give him a thanksgiving right now. Let's make it a lifestyle. Let's make it a part of our lives. Jesus is not just a part of our lives. He's everything. The Bible says he's more than once. He is our life. And so if that's true, let's just thank him this morning. We thank you, Father. We thank you, Lord, for the air that we breathe. We thank you, Lord, for the blood in our veins. We thank you, Lord, for sober minds this morning, not distracted minds, not, not fractured minds this morning. We thank you, Lord, this morning our, we are here. We are ready to receive from you, Father. We ask that you give us a word from heaven this morning in Jesus' name. Words of knowledge, words of wisdom flowing in Jesus' name. We thank you, Lord. We bless you, Lord. We thank you, Jesus. Come on, everybody. Thank you, Lord. We bless you, Lord. We don't get tired of it. We could do this all day long if we want. Hallelujah. Help us to be praised and worshiping people, Father. Help us to do it for not just 30 seconds or something, but sometimes in our homes to worship you and have your presence just fill up every nook and cranny of our homes in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. You know, God's in us, but he needs to fill us with his fullness. Amen. There's a big difference. There's a lot of people, a lot of Christians that are born again. But they're not filled with his fullness, amen? They don't have much fullness at all. And the best way to get really filled up is to be filled with the Holy Ghost and speaking in other tongues, amen? amen. Hallelujah. To be full of the word, hallelujah. Turn with me in your Bibles, if you don't mind, to Proverbs chapter 22. I've been enjoying the book of Proverbs. This, this uh, sermon, if you want to call it that, message from the Lord, is something that the Lord's been impressing on my heart for months. So... Many times I've had something come up in my spirit the day ahead of time, but this has been months and months and months of study. I don't remember how long. But it's something that is all over the Old Testament. It's all over the New Testament. And I'm not going to ask you to go to too many scriptures, although because of who I am, if you ask my wife, I just quote scriptures a lot. And I'm not trying to be preachy. I'm not trying to overdo it. I'm not trying to do anything. It's just part of my lingo. It's part of my words, right? It's just how I talk. You're not going to hear a whole lot of colloquialisms out of me, and you're not going to hear doubt and unbelief and 
weird stuff coming out, right? Sometimes we get that when we're around sinners, you know. All of a sudden you start picking up a phrase or a word that is anti-Bible, you know. And so we have to, when we're being around the sinners, always be prayed up. We call it being prayed up, you know. Is this Periscope or Facebook Live? Facebook Live, you got to be prayed up. Amen? you gotta be, You got to get the word in you. Amen? you got to be worshiping God and, and thanking God throughout the day. Amen? That's how you have a good day. That's how you stop having bad days in Jesus' name. No more bad days, Facebook Live. I want to hear some good Facebook statuses. Amen? Christians here in Faith Live, we don't need to have bad days. You know, Norval Hayes said it too. He just, he just said, I don't have sad days anymore. Why don't you have sad days anymore, Brother Norval? You got to worship the Lord. You got to worship the Lord. The guy's like a multimillionaire, you know, owns businesses, getting people saved right and left. That's the kind of life I want to be living. You got to worship the Lord. He says, he says, when the last, somebody comes to him with a problem, when's the last time you worship the Lord? And the person looks at him like, uh, uh, maybe last Sunday or something. Well, it's, it's a wonder why something else hasn't gone wrong. Amen. It's the grace of God. How, how about getting on our knees sometimes and just go find a corner in your house somewhere? And believe me, we all have time if we make that time. Amen. If it matters to us, if Jesus matters to you, do you make time for him? My wife matters to me, so I make time for her. You know, even when we're up late at night and we wanted to go to sleep at 9 and it it's 9.36, and we're still talking about something in the bed, right? Because a few things came up before we fell asleep, amen? And that went to this and that and that, and it was good things. But it was a lot of things, you know? It's important, though. That's how you keep a marriage going. That's how you keep a relationship going. you got to walk and talk with the Lord, amen? And listen inwardly. Proverbs 22, verse 4. By humility and the fear of the Lord our riches, and honor, and life. So this message, if you want to give it a message, Brother Scott, if you're still here at the end of the service and you're not sitting in the Door County Jail, just kidding, I'm just really playing with him now. The fear of the Lord, your key to success in life. How would you like to have a key to success? Or do you want a key that opens up a door to a bunch of darkness and junk? Nobody wants that. Yet Christians sometimes... They say they want this, but then they open the door to this, and it's full of the city dump, and it's full of darkness and deception. So I'm giving you the key this morning that God's given me so you can have success in life, and not just in like two areas, but in all areas. I met a salesman once. They said the, the cog of that wheel is like your family and or, you know God and your family and stuff, and there's spokes that stick out of it, and if you don't have all those spokes aren't working, your wheel's going to fall apart, you know? But God is our life. Amen? And if you look in Job 28, let's go to Job. That's right before Psalms. A lot of people, including myself, used to think Job was a really bad book. You know, the Lord gives and the Lord takes away. I say, yes, the Lord gives me healing and he takes away my sickness. He gives me wealth and he takes away my poverty. Amen? Because of the curse of the law, i am been redeemed from. Amen? And then if you just read, just casually read the back end of the book, he repents, and he gets blessed twice more than he ever had before. Why are we crying about Job? Because he ain't crying, amen? He's having a good old time, amen? And this was before the covenant. So in 28th chapter of Job, we have verse 12. Where shall wisdom... I need to start my timer. So I actually made a few minutes on you. All right. Where shall wisdom be found? Where is the place of understanding? Where is it, guys and gals? Where is it? And it goes through that list. You can read it when you get home of all these places where they're looking for it on earth or they're trying to compare it to the value of something else. All the things we think are so important in this life. You know, got to have my title, got to have my nice car, got to keep up with the Joneses, right? Got to max out my credit card if I have to do it, but I'm going to look good. I know I'm not really preaching to us here, but that's what happens. You, there's people driving around in beautiful cars and they are in debt. They're underneath the surface, right? And verse 20, whence then cometh wisdom? Where is the place of understanding? We're still asking the question, but for lack of time, I'm going to summarize it. Verse 28, unto man, he said, behold, the fear of the Lord, that is wisdom, and to depart from evil is understanding. Amen. 
So I'm here to say, you know, we're not going to be perfect, but the forgiveness of God is not meant for us to abuse. Please don't watch a preacher who tells you it's okay to abuse the grace of God. Because it's so dangerous, it will wreck your life. He's giving you a key to, remember, open a door that has the city dump inside and darkness, deception, sickness, disease, poverty. And it may not happen just like this, but you wait and see a year from then. You wait and see what happens. Amen? So, for example, you know, doing the same sin over and over and over again and just asking God to forgive us later. Can we learn? Can we learn? I think we can. Until we get used to doing that, we don't even think it's a sin anymore. And then your, your conscience gets seared as a hot iron, the Bible calls it. Amen? That's called abusing the grace of God. So we don't want to do that. Amen? Sometimes in life, you know, if your wife's telling you something over and over, your family's telling you something over and over and it's the same thing, maybe it's time to perk up and listen. Amen? Well, you don't have to nag me about it. Well, maybe you ought to listen. You know what I'm saying? Well, you don't have to nag. Well, maybe you ought to listen. Maybe I'm telling the truth because it's true, you know? You know, thank God for the people that do speak up. There's a lot of people in Wisconsin, they won't speak up. You need to speak up, Wisconsin. And I'm not talking about the ones that have some, I'm going to give you a piece of my mind, you know? And then you're like, do we have a problem? You know what I'm saying? No, we don't want that. We want somebody, a real friend, you know what a real friend does? Tells you the truth. And nothing but the truth. So help me, God, even if you walk the other way, I'm going to tell my friends the truth. And that's just what I do. Because I'm a straight shooter and I care about people. I care about them enough to tell them if, for example, I had a friend that is a homosexual, I'm going to tell him, I love you, man, but that's going to destroy your life and it's sin. I don't agree with it. And I depart from that evil that's not a part of my life. You know, I don't want to be a part of yours. They can, they can think I hate them or whatever, but they'd be a lie. Amen. I love them as much as any other neighbor I have. Amen. Proverbs chapter 3. Let's go over there if you don't mind. Proverbs 3. Like I said, I'm not going to send you to too many scriptures today, but these ones are good ones to highlight. So if you've got a highlighter, mark up your Bibles, underline, asterisks, whatever you've got to do. You know, life is a fight. It's one that we're going to win or lose every day, right? Your life is a fight whether you've got God in it or not. You're going to be fighting something. You might as well have the greater power, the greater one on your side, inside of you. Amen? You might as well because we're, gonna be, we're all going to face stuff. I was talking to my wife about this. We're all going to face things that others won't face. And you're going to face things I'm not going to face. We're all going to face it sooner or later. And that big bully, that big Goliath is going to be in your face maybe even right now and is trying to tell you you're not going to make it. But you know what? Goliath had a time, a time and season. He did that. He only had 40 days. But guess who showed up on the 40th day? Mr. David. David showed up and he heard it. And he wasn't going to have any of that. He said, I've got an anointing. And I, and I got God built up in me to the point that if I hear this kind of stuff, I'm not going to stand around and take it and let my knees knock together. And so he took some time out there in that shepherd's field when he was knocking around lions and bears with his bare hands. And it's not just because he was called to be a king. You know, we're all kings and priests, right? Not just, you know, pastor or apostle or prophet. We're called to do things. We're called to rock this world, if you know what I'm saying. Not just be martyrs and die on crosses and get burned at the stake. But William Tyndale rocked this world before he got burnt at the stake. He wrote what accounted to be 83 to 90% of what your King James Bible is. That's why I like to give him credit. Even online, I like to give him credit. I call that King James Bible your new revised Tyndale version. Amen? Because he worked real hard and he gave his life for it. He didn't, they didn't even let him to translate the Old Testament. He didn't make it that far. Okay, in Proverbs 3... Chapter 3, verse 5, trust in the Lord with all your heart, lean not unto your own understanding. That's a loaded scripture that could, you could speak messages and messages and volumes on that itself. But we'll go on, in all our ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your paths. That means to make them pl prosperous and pleasant, to level out your road, to straighten it out. And, and so the straight and narrow road, Amen. It says, be not wise in your own eyes, fear the Lord, and depart from evil. So again, Job 28, 28 says to fear the Lord, depart from evil. So that's what fearing the Lord is. It's departing from evil. It's getting away from it. It's not legalism. It's getting away from the things that are going to distract you and are going to hurt you. Amen? Praise God. So I guess my description of what the fear of the Lord could be is an awe and respect for God to honor him in all that we do, worship him. Amen? 
to make him the ruler of our lives? If we're going to call ourselves Christians, then Jesus needs to be the ruler. He needs to call the shots, amen, in everything. Like we said, you can have, you know, for example, you could have this beautiful perfume. Throw some flies in there. It's going to make things stink up real good. Ecclesiastes says so, right? And you don't want to be putting junk in your Mary Kay, right? I, I don't want to be throwing junk in my, in my art supplies when I'm making art, right? And uh, it's important that with the Lord is dealing with you on something, let him deal with you and yield to it. Because if he's dealing with you on something, it's a reason he's doing it. Because he wants to purify and purge you to a new level. So correction is good. We love correction. It's the way of life, the Bible says. Also known as instruction. Amen. Praise God, you guys are getting Oh, you know, I'm getting it too. I get it all the time from the Lord. Amen. I get every daily decision. I'm faced with the fact that I need to walk by faith. And I need to be wise in my ways. Amen. Oh, man, this is good stuff. It's good stuff, but it's not, I, I understand, it's, sometimes it's like, oh boy, but this is the stuff that gets me lit up because this is what saves me from death. I want to be saved from death. I don't want everybody just to tell me how wonderful I am all the time because that just is not true. I am not wonderful all the time, Brother Paul. I've seen myself in the mirror sometimes and it ain't real pretty, you know what I mean? So I'm learning uh, more than I ever have before my Christian life, hypocrisy out the window, judging other people's out the window. Jesus said so. You're to criticize yourself. Criticize the person in that, re that reflection. Amen. Praise God. Verse 13, happy is the man that finds wisdom. So if you found wisdom, you're happy. Who likes being happy? Do you like roller coasters? Well, some people like roller coasters. But do you like the emotional roller coaster of life? You feel like you're going to throw up, and then you feel, like, elated, and then you're down, way down in the basement again? I don't think people like that. But your emotions aren't to be, like, to the point that, I don't have emotions, I don't have emotions. Well, what do you want to be, a robot or something? You know? Angels don't have emotions. I'm not an angel. I was ranked higher than them, men. I ranked higher than angels. Yes, Door County, you don't turn into an angel when you die. I don't know who made that up. It's the weirdest thing I've ever heard. I don't need wings anyways in heaven because I just go wherever I want, just like this. How do I know that? I just know that. I just know that I know, you know. You know? Verse uh, 13, as we said, and the man that gets understanding. Well, or we can say happy is a man that fears the Lord, and happy is a man that departs from evil. Amen? So if you know it's evil, now if you don't know, it's, still, it's not going to help you, but you need to walk in the light of what you know, like, and it's not just a bunch of stuff, outward stuff. Christians get hung up on all the outward stuff. Don't smoke cigarettes. Don't drink hard liquor. You know, don't put your hair up that way. Don't wear that. Don't do this. Don't do that. <clears throat> and then all the pastor's kids just say, forget this. I don't want anything to do with this. It's a bunch of rules and regulations. How about teach your kids to fear the Lord and depart from evil, amen, and love what they're doing, you know? Don't, don't make them do that and make them do this. Just be an example. Be a Christian in front of them, amen? amen? Yeah, how about that? Amen. So, for the merchandise of it is better than the merchandise of silver, and the gain thereof than fine gold. She is more precious than rubies. All the things you can desire, not to be compared to her, not to be equal to her, amen? Length of days is in her right hand. So, we got long days. Who wants to live a long life? Raise your hands if you want to live a long time. Raise your hands if you want to live like one more year and then bite the dust. And I'm not talking rapture. Nobody. It's a dumb question. Okay, what's in the left hand? Let's see. Now, this is real. This isn't fairy tales. This isn't Cinderella and all that stuff. This is the real deal. Amen? You got to believe that. And it says in her left hand is what? Say it with me. Riches and honor. So there's nothing wrong with riches and honor or a long life. Amen? Her ways are ways of pleasantness. All her paths are peace. Amen? That is something to claim right there. If you're a name it and claim it person, name that and claim that. Stake your claim on that. My ways are ways of pleasantness. All my paths are peace. Does that mean I'm never going to run into something? I didn't say that. But you can have a pleasant path and a, and a peaceful way about it. Amen? Because God's inside of you. Amen? She is a tree of life to those who lay hold on her. Happy is everyone that retains her. 
Ha you're going to be happy if you get it, and you're going to be happy if you hold on to it. So just keep holding on to it. Regardless of your friend who you've known for many years, everybody's had a friend that they've known for many years, and, and you're still praying for them, but God knows where they are. You don't know what they're doing. The last time you heard something about it, it wasn't good. Everybody's going, huh? Eh, I know what you're saying, Pastor Tim. You know, we've all been there. Let's go to Proverbs chapter 8. I'm just going to set us up with a few foundational scriptures. I think it's important to build our lives on the Word of God. You know, when the flood beats vehemently on your house, because it will, doesn't say it's not going to, is it going to start shaking because you built it on sand and then immediately fall apart? Or is it going to stand strong? They all heard the Word. We all heard it, but did we do it? Kenneth Copeland says, I read my Bible so I can get in there and look at find out something I can act on. Amen? So when you get in the Word, when I come to church and I hear pastor, I'm going to get in there and see what I can act on. I'm going to listen for when he's meddling with stuff. The Holy Ghost meddling through him, you know, and stepping on my toes, so to speak. Thank God, because we just said a real friend will do that. Amen? Fakers, they'll just cheer you on whatever you do. Hey, you're great, you're great, and then turn around and go, that guy's a loser. <laughs> ain't no friend. You know, tell me the truth, right? I didn't have any real friends until I came up here. Met the Terry family, told me the truth. Amen. And we have in verse 10, 8, 10. Receive my instruction, not silver, knowledge rather than choice gold. Wisdom is better than rubies and all the things that may be desired, not be compared to her. Again, we see that. Now we see it, all the things that may be desired by anybody are not to be compared to her. I, wisdom, dwell with prudence. I find out knowledge of witty inventions. The fear of the Lord, there it is again, fear of the Lord, locked in there with wisdom, is to hate evil, pride, and arrogancy, and the evil way and the froward mouth do I hate. Counsel's mind, sound wisdom, I'm understanding, I have strength. By me kings reign, princes decree justice. By me princes rule and nobles and all the judges of the earth. I like verse 17. You got to put it up on your fridge or something. I love them that love me. I love wisdom, and wisdom loves me. Say it with me. I love wisdom. Wisdom loves me. Amen. And those that seek me early, or seek me diligently, daily, not just daily, but throughout the day, you have it on your mind. What can I do that could be wise right now? What do I not want to do that's really stupid? Right? Help me, Lord, not to be stupid today. Yes. I pray this. I pray this. Because all of us do stupid things. Things that are mindless. If we knew better, we wouldn't do them. And sometimes Christians, they flat out know what's wrong and do it anyways. Have you ever been there? Come on, be honest. You're in the Catholic confessional booth hot seat right now. We got, we got a couple in the back row here. Amen. And we have riches and honor are with me again. Riches and honor. Amen. And yes, durable riches. It's called the long-lasting kind. You know? The world's full of people that are prospering. The Bible says not to envy them. Don't envy those people. Don't envy a thing that they have. You know, we don't want to be like that. People sell their souls, you know, to have all of this fame and wealth and everything. And they'll tell you later on. All the rock stars will tell you. I, I missed my daughter being born, or, or I, I missed her whole entire childhood, and I regret the whole thing. Wrecked my entire life. Wasted my entire life. But people just love to listen to their music on the radio. I get tired of listening to those same old dumb songs. Is it just me when they play the radio and stuff? You ever hear that? They play that same old music. It's just like nails on a chalkboard. Get me out of here. I am, I'm just praising the Lord by myself somewhere. Because how many times do we need to listen to that, right? It just gets old, you know what I'm saying? But I do like some good oldies every now and then, Brother Arthur. Just a few ones, you know what I'm saying? I know Brother Al Klahusky is in heaven now. He, he enjoyed some good oldies and stuff. It's good stuff. They could actually sing back then and play instruments. Imagine that. Okay. So in, um, okay, my fruit is better than gold. Yes, than fine gold. My revenue than choice silver. I lead in the way of righteousness in the midst of the paths of justice. Excuse me, judgment. That I may cause those that love me to inherit substance. And I will fill their treasures. So you don't have to hunt down part-time jobs and full-time jobs and all this other job, job, jobs. Working 100 hours a week. Got to have both of us working, hun. Got to have us both working. Got to get her done. Come on, get her done, hun. 100,000 hours a week. Don't sleep. Just got to pay that bill. 
Christians and I'm loving it. No, I wouldn't love that. That would just be horrible, you know. Wisdom will fill your treasures. I've, I can't tell you how many times I've seen the dollar get stretched so far you'd think it would snap, but it still keeps pulling. I get stuff for like 90% off, 95% off. I don't, I don't know how the Lord does it. I'm just happy that he does. Let's go to Proverbs 5. Proverbs 5. You know, this is the best way to get rid of it. We talked about opening that, getting a key to open the door that would open things up in your life that would wreck it, right? Maybe some of you are experiencing some of that right now. So it's going to hit a chord, right? Proverbs 5. Now, you know, as Christians, especially Christian men, you know, there's all kinds of junk everywhere. There's all kinds of, like, porn and dirty pictures everywhere, you know? You go to the grocery store aisle, and it's just like, look straight to the cashier, because over here and here, it's just, like, not good, it's, you know? Whether you're married or not, it's just not good for you. You know, the Bible says in chapter 5, verse 3, the lips of a strange woman drop as a honeycomb. Her mouth is smoother than oil. Her end is bitter. It's very bitter, isn't it? Amen? As wormwood, sharp as a two-edged sword, her feet go down to death. Her steps take hold on hell. Now, understand me. I'm not just beating up on a, a loose woman or something, okay? It goes both ways. But Proverbs is talking spe- specifically about seductresses and stuff like that. And they're all over the place. You don't have to go to their house, to a, a house of a prostitute, or go to a strip joint, right? They're all over the place. You know, I got to hand it to the devil. He's kind of infiltrated stuff. I got to even watch my, my smartphone because it'll pull up ads and stuff. You know, boom. Like, ah, what is that? You know, I'm trying to study my Bible. Well, usually, what, if, what I know is that if the, those things pop up, it's because usually people search for them. <laughs> Moving right along because I went over so big. So I, it, it's usually when I go to, like, read the news or something, there's that, that junk will pop up if you scroll too far or whatever. Anyways, it's a choice we make. Good preachers will tell you about this. You know, it's a choice. If you look at it, if you're looking at it, you're going to end up doing something that you're not supposed to be doing, amen? It'll get in your heart. It says right here, her feet go down to death, her steps take hold on hell. Lest you should ponder the path of life, her ways are movable, and that you cannot even know them. Hear me now, therefore, O ye children, especially men. Depart not from the words of my mouth. Remove your way far from her, and don't come near the door of her house. Don't even come near that stuff online or TV set, whatever. It'll just wreck your life. It'll destroy what God's doing in the fear of the Lord in your life. Lest you give your honor. Okay, this is what I read this for specifically. You're going to watch right now your honor, your years, your wealth, and your health will all deteriorate right through this. Watch this. Lest you give your honor to others, your years to the cruel. You'll cut years off your life. It says, lest strangers be filled with your wealth, you know, and your labors be in the house of a stranger. It also says, you, and you mourn at the last when your flesh and your body are consumed. You know, it reminds me of when pastor talks about, you know, discerning the body of Christ. Those who don't, you know, they're weak, sickly, and they prematurely die. I've seen a lot of Christians up here that were in this area prematurely die. They're not even with us anymore. They went to heaven early. Were they supposed to? No. They weren't even very old, right? And th- there is a way that God can get you through it. There's a lot of people here. I raised my hand, too. You know, we should be dead right now. We had some issue going on that was pretty heavy duty, right? You know? And there's a lot of people that aren't here with us right now. They just maybe miss church for whatever reason. And they're alive today because of the grace of God. Amen? So when the Lord's talking to us, what do we do? We listen. Sometimes we use these, you know, like when I sit here and I listen to pastor, most of the time I listen inwardly. You know, I listen to my wife when she's talking to me. There's a couple times, sometimes, where... You know, my stock goes down a little bit, so to speak, because I missed something. And I go, oh, she did mention that three times. I think it might be important to fix that, all right? Other times, to back myself up, I'll just fix it. She didn't even ask. Yeah, I got an amen. Praise God. Proverbs 23, moving right along. 23, verse 17. Here's a good one for you. Proverbs 23, 17 says, Let not your heart envy sinners. But be in the fear of the Lord all the day long. How do, you, how do you be in the fear of the Lord all day long? I'll give you a little something I learned from Deuteronomy and other verses. Being in the Word, meditating on the Word, reading the Word and stuff, is going to teach you the fear of the Lord. It's going to teach you to meditate in that Word day and night. You look at Psalms 2, it says, His delight 
is in the law of the Lord, and his word does he meditate day and night, it's, it's happening all the time. You have stuff rolling around you all the time, but it doesn't happen overnight. You have to develop that. Your spirit will actually bring up, happy as a man, happy as a man. Okay, so I guess it might be best not to just ream this guy out because he's got it coming anyways, you know. So it's probably not a good idea, right? Love your neighbor as yourself. So you choose life. Because that's your flesh. You've got a flesh, and your flesh wants to do wicked things like pretty much all the time. But you don't really hear the voice of your flesh if you're listening to your spirit. Amen? But it's always there. And it always try to rear its ugly head, right? Ecclesiastes 5, 7. Say it with me. Ecclesiastes. Say it five times fast. Ecclesiastes. Ecclesiastes. Okay. Very good. Sister Kathy's good at that. 15 times fast. Just kidding. <laughs> I lost count. Here, while you do that, I'm going to get some water. <laughs> yes. I like one of the, I have a document called Great Sayings. I was reading it this morning and I got one of them from Sister Kathy. It was some years back. It says, toil spoils a blessing. Find the mind of the spirit. I thought that was really good. And I needed that because I was a toiler. And I still got to watch it, you know, because I'm like, I like to go after things and pursue things, you know. Well, go after wisdom and pursue wisdom. Wisdom will tell you to sit down. <laughs> watch some TV. It's not all bad, right? Amen. Ecclesiastes 5, 7 says, For in the multitude of dreams and many words, there are also, I'm going to translate it, various vanities, but fear thou God. Fear thou God instead. I like one of the scriptures in Ecclesiastes. I'm just going to throw this in there. NLT. Enjoy what you have rather than desiring what you don't have. So that doesn't mean that you can't believe God for better things. But first of all, I'm content with what I have. If I'm not, that means I'm not thankful. And I could get that big house, that Dodge Challenger, that bigger house because I want a bigger kitchen for you, you know what I'm saying? Or all these things that I've got my faith out for down the road. But I'd never be thankful for those either because there'd be another issue with those. You'll never be happy. You'll be the never happy Christian. He's always got something negative to say and is always having a sad day. We don't need sad days and we don't need to be unhappy Christians, right? Or just... Feel critical about everything. Amen? You know, it's like, it's like the weather. You know, it's cooling off outside, but I like it. It's my favorite kind of weather, you know. And when it gets really cold, let's just fight to find something good. Hey, isn't that snow pretty? It's really hard, but it's really pretty, you know. So 1 Peter 2.17 says to honor all men. I wanted to share this with you because it's in the New Testament. Oh, my gosh. Fearing God is in the New Testament, too. It must be for us in 2016. Honor all men. Fear God, Peter said. He also said in chapter 3, verse 10, turn away from evil and do good. There's a reason he wants us to turn away from evil. He doesn't just say, just screw up all you want and ask God forgive you later. That's going to wreck your life. Amen? It's abusing God's grace. It's better to say no to evil. Norval Hayes says, what's the best thing you ever say, say to the devil? What's the best thing? No. Amen. Other New Testament examples. Perfecting holiness in the fear of God, 2 Corinthians 7 and 1. Not in legalism and living under the law, but in the fear of God. That's a holy thing. Ephesians 5, 21. Submit yourselves one to another in the fear of God. That means the male isn't going to, you know, abuse the wife. Submit, submit, submit. That's not the fear of God. Sorry, you didn't read your Bible. You don't even read your Bible anyways, probably. Somebody would act like that. Abusing their family. Uh, Colossians 3.22, servants, obey in all things your masters, dot, 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 fearing God. Amen. Hebrews 12.28, let us have grace. So to obey God, I need the grace of God. To actually walk in the fear of God, I need the grace of God. So to do anything the Bible says, I need the grace of God. I need to be like a little child and come to the Father. Hey, I can't do anything by myself because I can't do anything without you. I'm nothing without you, right? So it says, let us have grace whereby we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. And Revelation 14, 7 says, fear God and give glory to him. When we don't fear God, we're walking in ways that are displeasing to him. We don't give him any glory. 
We should be the oaks of righteousness, he called us, the planting of the Lord, that give him glory and splendor. Amen? So when we walk in the fear of the Lord, what, what happens? We can flow with the Holy Spirit. We'll be like those trees out there. Those trees, right now, if you look out that window, they're not flowing by themselves. They're flowing under the direction of the wind. They're not fighting against it either. They spring back when it pushes too hard, but it, it always flows with the wind. You know, I always thought it would be interesting if there was no wind at all and they're just moving around out there. Ah. Artist, you. You artist. We walk in the fear of the Lord. We can flow with the Holy Spirit. So when the wind's blowing, we start going. Amen? God can use us in the gifts of the Spirit, in our God-given gifts and talents and callings. Amen? He can bless us and then use us in signs and wonders and miracles. Amen. Flip the page. Excuse me. So my note here is that the key here is in everything is faithfulness. Say it with me. Faithfulness. Faithfulness. Are you there when we need you? When we come looking for you, are you there? I've noticed when people call here and they ask, they need help, we're always here. We're always here. When I come looking for them, if I did, I don't know where they are. Now, I'm not beating up on them because I was there too. There was a time I was probably sitting right there in that seat-ish when Pastor was speaking, and I was up in Sister Bay at the time when the church just started. It was in a hotel, you know, and we were during worship, worship and, and praise, and I think Jennifer Burns was leading it, and something, our anointing was like going up in there. Ten minutes in, I couldn't take it. Woo! I'm out of here. I left my Bible, and I left it for a purpose, so people would think I was coming back. So I left my Dake's annotated Bible, and I went out the back door. I went down to Fish Creek, got myself some sunglasses, drove down to Green Bay, went to the Wildlife Sanctuary. This is back in like 2002 or one or whatever, 2001. And I drove all the way there, got back at like 4 o'clock. I was exhausted because I drove like three and a half hours for no purpose, no reason. And who calls? Jennifer calls me. Where have you been? I tried to call you like 12 times. We didn't know where you were. We didn't know if you were hurt or something. You just disappeared. Hey, imagine somebody that cared. Somebody actually cared, amen? And that's what I was looking for, somebody that actually gave a rip, right? And so, you know, I was thinking about that and the, the things where we started out, never despise a day of small beginnings. I missed a few services. You know, I was up super, super late at night one time just drawing a picture because it was anointed. Of course, it's anointed. Because it's anointed, that means I can miss service in the morning. I was up till 3 or 4 in the morning working on it, listening to the same Christian song for like five hours because that, that just makes it especially anointed. And I drew this picture, and I was good. And, you know, stuff like that. And, but, but I knew enough that I could tell God was doing something inside of me, and I knew I needed to be there. I needed to, you know, if you want to get delivered from the flood, you get inside the ark. Everybody else died. But I never, I never feel bad if maybe there's a service every now and then where people, a lot of people are out. Eight souls were saved by water, said Peter in First and Second Peter. Only eight of them by the ark. Amen. There weren't too many on that. There were mostly animals. It was mostly an animal house with eight folks on there. Probably smelled bad, too. And so we have, and we're moving right along here, faithfulness is developed through the fear of the Lord. Amen. It's walking in the light of what we know. It's called doing the right thing, the right way. But there's the biggest thing. Well, there's a lot of sinners that can do the right thing the right way. They just do what they're told. How about do it for the right reasons? You can't do it for the right reasons as a sinner because you don't have the love of God in you. It, the Bible says right in 1 Corinthians 13, you can give your body to be burned and profit nothing if you didn't do it out of love. You know, you can give everything up. And so we want to do it for all the right reasons. That's what God cares about. We can look good to each other all day long, do the right thing, and down on the inside, we don't see that part. See, the Lord doesn't see as men see. But, you know, the men look on outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. So if, like, for example, somebody's looking for a mate and believing God for a mate, trust God to see them the way God sees them, not the way you see them. You know, my wife had to use a lot of faith when she first saw me. And, like, we would, like, butt heads to the max when we first met. It was, like, on again and off again. 
And it was a few years of that, and we were engaged for like a year, year and a half or something. And then, you know, the Lord just kind of really, really did something special there. And, you know, it's like Stallone said, that, you know, you take a man and woman, you know, and when you get married, it just fills gaps. It just fills gaps, you know, if you let it. But I don't, I don't fight her because there could be a, a, a something that comes up and she sees something negative in it because it's true. There's something negative there to watch out for. It's a warning. And I can also see, like, a positive in it. Don't take it the wrong way because someone said negative. Negative doesn't mean it's anti-faith. It just means it's wisdom. It means it's cautionary. And I could see something maybe not so good, and she could see something good. Let's put it together, and you got the truth there. You know what I'm saying? So it's important. That's what I like about marriage. You know, I, I, I'm happy I didn't marry somebody that's just like me, you know, because I, I had enough of me already. I got enough of me right now. You know what I mean? I got to deal with me. So I like that, you know, it fills the gaps instead of just being the same thing, you know. So it's, it's kind of like those uh, social media online dating things. Oh, let's find everything in common with each other. Everything in common. Like that's the best way to find your perfect pair. That will, that will find me about 150 just in Wisconsin probably, if they're even online. So just because you like art or... Just because you like a Dodge Challenger, that means absolutely nothing. Nothing. Because there'll be a new model out next week of the Challenger. Who cares, you know? So anyways, you don't just want to... The things that you need to agree on are the spiritual things, you know? That's why the Bible is very, very strong on making sure that we are marrying somebody of like-minded faith. Amen. So we can hear accurately also through the fear of the Lord, the voice of our shepherd in our inner man. With the inner ear, right? You ever have the Lord speak to you just on the inside? You know, if you told this to a sinner, they just think you're crazy. You belong in a cuckoo farm or something, you know? And it's like, no, there is so much more that I can't see that's going on than what I can see. You know, the wind itself, I can't grab it. I can't take it home. I can't even see it. You think I'm nuts because I think it's, I believe it's there. I'm watching its effects right through the window. You know, water, you, know, it's, it's, you can see it, but it's like invisible. You know, I've never seen my brain, but I know it's in there somewhere, you know. It's like, it's like somebody that thinks through their five physical senses will receive nothing from God. You will not be used by God. You will not see when the Lord is moving. You will not understand the moving of the Lord, right? So it's important. The true leading of the Holy Spirit in our inner man, that voice we call it, or I just call it a leading and guidance and impression, that's, that's my favorite thing as a Christian. So there's, there's time, I take the Bible with me a lot because I like to have it on me. I like to have a scripture on me. But the thing is, if I'm like in a bad situation among people just wanting to fight with me or fighting amongst each other, I know I've got God here. He's in here. So I'm all right. Maybe they're not all right, but I am. And the whole situation will simmer down real fast because I know that. It's all based on your knowledge of that inward man and what's going on in there. And it grows. That's something you need to develop. Amen. And it happens through the word, praying in the spirit, and worshiping the Lord. Amen. I try, I'm, I'm trying to do my best Norval Hayes impression. He's one of my heroes. Fear of the Lord is yielding to the Holy Spirit and not our bodies and our thoughts. Amen. God's wisdom is supernatural. It is spiritual. Amen. I'm going to say that again. God's wisdom is supernatural. It's a spiritual thing. It's a thing of your spirit. God speaks to our spirits because he is a spirit. Amen? He doesn't speak to our minds. He's not a mind. Right? He doesn't lead us by taking over our bodies. I made the decision to get up this morning and come here. He's not going to make me do it. And he told us to do something with our bodies, by the way. He told us to make him a living sacrifice. Ecclesiastes 12.13. We'll finish up this part of the message. I have a mini message that I'll probably be able to pull off in about 10 minutes if I'm fast enough because I only have so much time amen so Ecclesiastes 12 13 it says let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter let's hear the conclusion of Pastor Tim's message today here we go let's wrap it up fear God and keep his commandments this is the whole duty of man amen the whole duty of man so I wanted to finish up today by uh, by telling you you know this title of this mini message is called ascent of water 
kind of like that poetic title, A Scent of Water. I like poetry. I like Longfellow. I like a little Walt, Walt Whitman. Some of it gets a little weird. Um, I'm not really into Poe because it's really dark. Um, my favorites would be, um, anyone ever heard of William Cullen Bryant? To a Waterfall. That's a great one. You ought to just Google that when you get home and read it because it'll minister to you. And then my other favorite is Robert Frost. Good stuff. And what I like about it is it's really short. You can read it on a little small page, you know, and just kind of chew on it a little bit. It's pretty cool. Sometimes it'll even inspire you to write your own. But anyways, this is called a scent of water. And I feel like this is a word for some people in our church or someone in particular. And I think it's, you know, it's going to motivate you and inspire you anyways because I know it did for me. Because I got it first, right? <laughs> Amen. That's the fun part about being a preacher. You get, you get it first, amen, because I need it just like you do, right? Proverbs 13, 12. Hope deferred maketh the heart sick. You ever hear that scripture? When the desire cometh, there is a tree of life. Can I give you the Pastor Tim paraphrase? Okay. Unrelenting disappointment makes the heart weak and grieved. But when the promise is fulfilled, there is a tree of life. I like trees. Can you tell? I like trees. They remind me of the cross. There's a big old chunk of wood sticking straight out of the ground, and the branches go like this. How does that not remind you of the cross? So Jesus, you know, he's this, and we're the branches shooting out. We're creating a shadow for the, for the birds to nest under. Uh, people hang out underneath and get some shade and rest, and they create their nest in the branches, not on the vine. That's where the fruit grows on the branches. Does a tree grow fruit for itself? It does not. It doesn't partake of it. Although, of course, I say it, we're partaking of it as preachers when we receive something. But that branch is for people to go up and pluck that juicy fruit off of. But you know what's really rotten? Is when someone goes up to that Christian, there's nothing there but hypocrisy and judgment and, and beating you up, making you feel bad because you didn't go to church or something. There's no fruit there. And I think even a, a born-again Christian who just starts out can have juice hanging off, just juicy fruit hanging off of those things, right? And if we don't have that there, what are we doing? What, what, is, what is the point of our faith, right? So that scripture says, when the promise is fulfilled, there's a tree of life. And so I think a lot of us have been through an unrelenting disappointment at times in our lives. Maybe you're going through it right now. Maybe you've been dealing with the same thing for years. Just because you've been going through it for years doesn't mean that it's just going to keep going on forever, or that you should give up now when the race is almost done, right? Job 14, we're going to go over there. Last scripture, you don't have to go to anymore. Maybe you burned up half your pages in your King James Bible. Amen. Praise the Lord. I want to take a quick break here. Just do something totally random. Look up Colossians 1.14 in your Bible for fun. Colossians 1.14. Tell me what you see. I'm going to go there too. Colossians 1.14. This is, this is just a fun little, little detour. Bible says there, in whom we have redemption, through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. I was talking to Sister Julie about this. She gave me the nod, so I'm going for it. So anyways, in all the translations that are of like the 1900s, I use them all. I love them all. I get, I get born again off of them all. But my primaries are a little different. My primary is what I use here. But in the 1900s, if you look at a lot of Bibles, a lot of you don't even see through his blood in your Bibles, do you? I'm not beating up on you for not having it in your Bible, okay? I'm giving you an acid test for fun. So make sure your primary Bible has things like that. And it's not being picky, but go to Acts 8.37, the last one. See, I broke my promise. I was going to tell you like one more scripture. Sorry about that. Acts 8.37. This is a funny one. Because in a lot of the newer translations, you will have like nothing there. Oh, I, I, when I found that out, I was like, don't, so don't just throw them away because it's not there. But make sure your primary Bible has got these scriptures in them. Acts 8.37 doesn't exist in a lot of my favorite newer translations. Because it's not in the oldest oldest translations of the Bible. It's a lie. It's not actually true. I've investigated it. The oldest translations. 
King James Bible, Coverdale Bible, Great Bible, Matthew's Bible, Darby, uh, I think it's Darby. Um, I'm, I'm missing a lot just off the top of my head. But they all agree together. So why, why do we look at the book of Mark and see half of it missing or noted as missing in the ESV? I don't like that. I don't like it when it says, oh, the back half of Mark 16, you know, we're going to all the world, preach the gospel, you know, that really important scripture. It's not in the original translations. So, you know, watch out for that. I'm telling you that's not true. It was actually based on some kind of Catholic document that was found in like the last 500 years. We're basing these things off of documents that were thousands of years old. Dead Sea Scrolls, stuff like that. So it's important. Make sure you have those two scriptures if you want to pass the acid test on your primary translation. Because, you know, I like them all. Don't get me wrong. I'm not one of these King James only people. But I think it's important that we all know that. That I think Acts 8.37 is pretty important, don't you? He's, he's talking to this Ethiopian about getting born again and stuff. And he says, you know, I believe Jesus Christ is the Son of God. You know, So anyways... They, it's not just those. There's a lot of omissions in the newer translations. So just be on the watch out. That's what I'm here for. I'm here to tell you watch out for certain things. And I didn't just Google this yesterday either. So I've been, I've been keeping an eye on it for the last year or two. And I've noticed in my translations, because I use up to 52 or 60 of them, whatever them pop up. And I notice things like that sometimes as I go forward. So that was a little nugget for you. So I don't know exactly why it came up then. Maybe it was just me. But anyways, Job 14, let's go back over there, and I'm going to finish up, get a little bit of encouragement into you. Every church goes through issues because churches are families. Does your church ever, your family ever have an issue? Maybe you had one this morning. Maybe you had one yesterday. You know, people can see it on you. They can see it on me, right? Look like the guy's been through the ringer. What happened there? Well, it might not be a human relationship thing. It might be just something busted at your house you had to fix. And you had to figure out how to fix it. And it's putting you through the ringer, but you're charging on, right? Or you didn't sleep very well the last three nights, you know? I put my faith on it to sleep good at night. I don't know about you, but I, I ask God for wisdom to give us the ability to sleep through the night because wisdom gives us that ability. It talks about that in the first few chapters. There's another one I didn't plan on saying there. Job 14. <laughs> Verse 7. Okay, is everybody ready? Hold on to those seats. There's no handles there. There's no seat belt on your chair, but hold on anyways. Okay, because this is important. This is from the Holy Spirit. Okay, ready? 14, verse 7. There is hope of a tree. Remember we talked about a promise fulfilled is a tree of life. Okay? There is hope of a tree. If it be cut down, that it will sprout again. And that the tender branch thereof will not cease. The Coverdale Bible says, it will shoot forth the branches again. So even if you feel like, you know, your dreams have been cut down over the past years, or the, the season you're in, right? I think the Lord likes that. He doesn't think in terms of time. He thinks in terms of season, you know? Has your enthusiasm for life, has it waned or died at all, right? You, has your God-given vision faded at all? Just be honest, you don't have to answer me, just on the inside. You know, I've got good news for you today. You know, it even says, though the root thereof wax old in the earth after it's been cut down, and the stock thereof die in the ground. What is the hope now? It's already dead, right? The stock is dead in the ground. What does it say? Yet through the scent of water, listen up, this word to you right now is that water. Through the scent of water it will bud and bring forth bows or branches like a plant. Amen? Another translation says, through the scent of water it will bud and bring forth branches like as when it was first planted. When you were first planted into the family of God, do you remember how excited you were? Maybe some of you are just there right now. That's fine. But do you remember how excited you were? Maybe, maybe you don't remember how excited you were. Maybe this is your time to get excited, amen? Maybe this is the time where Door County is going to keep hearing it from me over and over and over and over again. Because church, because life, because God is not a funeral. He never intended to be that way. I look at the New Testament, and it is not a funeral going on. You know, it is a celebration. Even when they were going through martyrdom and being thrown in prison, 
and praying together, they always got the victory somehow. Amen? Even when, when James was killed with the sword. You know, I got an interesting name. My name's Timothy, right? You know, Pastor Timothy? Pastor Timothy was killed by a crowd that he was trying to hold back and tell him, you know, don't do this. And the crowd of people killed him. He was trying to preach the word to him and tell him, don't do this. They were going to some procession to worship demons. And my middle name is James, which I just told you about. So, anyways, <laughs> moving right along. Do I think I have that calling to be a martyr? No, but in the sense that I am dead to preach this word and to stand here and be a, a, you know, like a scepter of righteousness, just like you, and we need to be a voice in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. I'm going to do it, and I'm going to do it. I'm going to keep doing it. I don't care if people like it or not. This is the truth. This is why I'm alive. Amen? This is why I can be alive, to have a family and raise my kids and take good care of them. The Lord's given me everything, so just the little bit I can give them and be a living sacrifice is not payback. It's just this is the least I can do, right? Amen? And when I see this, that through the scent of water, say it with me, I will bud and bring forth. Say it with me, my, my dreams will bud and bring forth. You know what the, that word bows or bows or however you say it? It means branches, right? Did you know that word, that Hebrew word, is actually found in the Old Testament 54 times? I looked it up because I have this really cool search engine thing that does this for me, right? And I think it's only four times where it's translated branches. Check it out. You know what it's translated 50 times as, Brother Arthur? Brother Norm? Anybody? It's translated harvest or harvest time. That means that we're going to bud and bring forth a harvest. Amen. I'm excited about that. Like when we were first planted. I mean, I was running around and telling everybody. They didn't want to listen to me, but I told them anyways. I told my family. They thought I was nuts. They liked that old person. They liked that old kind of rock and roll, you know? <laughs> kind of music just soothes your soul. No, it doesn't. It just makes you feel more low, right? And so even if your family doesn't understand you, it doesn't matter. If they were filled with the Holy Ghost like you, they would understand. I've already heard it from people. You know, Tim, I thought you were just wild and crazy, and I didn't understand anything about you. And then I got filled with the Holy Ghost. Now I understand. I've heard him tell me that. It's true, and it's the same thing with you. So we will bud, and we will bring forth a harvest. Yes, in Door County, look around you. There's people that already were harvested, amen, through prayer. I was a part of somebody's prayer harvest. Pastor Tom and Pastor Stella and Jennifer, she's praying for her future husband when she's a little kid, and I'm out there being an idiot everywhere and in everything, just about, like a plant, like a plant that was first planted, amen? You're going to bud and bring forth. It means to produce, another translation, produce a crop as one newly planted, amen? Another translation says to put forth those branches like a sapling, Jennifer, like a sapling. That's an inside joke. So I want to I want to just, just ask everyone to stand up right now. We're going to get ready to close here. I want to encourage everybody. This is for people that are here and not here. Personal stuff going on, church stuff going on, your job. You know, maybe you got what looks like one massive dead end in your life. Has anybody ever had a dead end? What looks like a dead end in their life? Anybody? All right. Not just me then. Amen. Well, that's the best time to speak to the mountain, right? Because why do we need to speak to the mountain if it's not there? The Bible says to speak to mountains. It doesn't say deny their existence. If you're sick, don't walk around and say, I'm not sick, I'm not sick. There's no power in that. Don't preach that kind of message to people. You say, I'm healed by his stripes. I have something more powerful to get rid of this, which the doctors can't rid of, get rid of, right? So I want to just give everyone just like, you know, just like a soldier in an army speaking to the other soldiers and just cheer you up and get you excited about things of life, things of church again. Even maybe you are excited, get more excited. Get so unglued that when you go to Taco Bell and they say, Hi, how are you today? You go, I am awesome. I'm doing so awesome. I'm going to tell you about Jesus right now. Well, sure, you know. There's times where somebody could call you up on the phone, a telemarketer or something, and just, you know what? I don't want to buy your product, but I want to know if you're born again Christian. Do you want to receive Jesus? You know, whatever. I mean, you're contacting people everywhere you go, every, everywhere you are. 
you got opportunities everywhere, right? So the opportunities are endless, amen? So I want to just say your labor is not in vain in the Lord. This church's labor is not in vain. Whether they stay or whether they go, that does not have any dictation to you on your spirit of where you are going to go. You know, the Lord's always there, right? And don't feel bad, you know, if you miss some services here. What I'm saying, I'm talking to people that are here, not to people that are, aren't here. I'm also talking to people that, you know, like Pastor Thomas Tella, they're not here, they're preaching, or people that couldn't make it today. But I'm not going to preach to people that have gone and left us in days gone by. That is not what we're here to preach about. Your labor is not in vain in the Lord. It will bud and bring forth a harvest. Amen? Did you know there's so much more underneath the surface, the surface of your life, in your community, in the country right now, and the stuff that we're facing, what we're up against in your life, in your family, in your church, your career, in your country. Like I just said, God is getting ready to shake everything that can be shaken. We need to be ready. Amen? Let your foundation be in Him. Your prayers are prevailing. If you could see them in the Spirit, that's why you should pray more prayers. You should get excited and say, I'm going to pray some more. I want to bring forth a lot of fruit when I'm praying. Amen? You know, everything that we have been through in our lives, you know, everything my wife and I have been through in our marriage, and everything we've been through in our church, everything you've been through in your career, even the stuff that you've been through when you were a kid, you know, even those, a lot of those things, they were of the devil, you know, the things you went through. But how you got through it, and the way maybe you walked by faith, you know, it's brought you to this moment right now. And so you need to be the Christian that God's called you to be. So if you're going to be that, just raise your hand right now. If I want, I'm, I'm here, Lord. I want to be that man or that woman, and I want to do something about it. You know, when we raise our hand, the Lord sees that. So don't make a vow, Ecclesiastes says, without thinking about it. You make a vow to the Lord, not me or this church. I'm not asking you to clean a toilet, although we could probably use somebody to do that too. I love cleaning toilets, and I love cleaning out the lights, whatever it takes to get the job done. And it all helps bring the glory in, amen? You know, the Lord says, I wanted you to stand because the Lord says this, and I'm going to close. I have a table prepared for you, my beloved. Won't you come to the table? I ordained and planned long ago for you to be there with me. I prepared a place for you, and your name was engraven in my hands, the wounds I received in the house of my friends. Won't you come? Won't you join me? I want you to, but I can't make you. Come and dine with me in the last great outpouring this earth, as you know it, will ever see. You need not have knowledge. You need not experience, you just need to come and dine with me. And if you believe that, let's stick up our hands and thank the Lord. We bless you, Lord. We thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord, for this message that you gave us this morning. You gave me. Not just to give, but you gave it to me. Lord God, help us to walk in the fear of the Lord. Help us to depart from evil. There is evil rampant, Lord God. But our prayers hold it back. Our prayers hold back the terrorist bombings. Our, our prayers... Hold back the wicked laws that could get even worse if we weren't here. Lord God, help us to rise from the dead. Stop moping around in Jesus' name and start doing something and stop hanging out in the corner and acting like we're worthless. And, that, and I'm not speaking to anyone in particular. I'm just speaking to an, a, a spirit that gets on people's minds. Lord God, we ask that you would, you would fill us with your fullness in Jesus' name, that we would do what you've told us and be filled with the Holy Spirit speaking in other tongues. Everybody right now, if you have your tongue's language, use it. Oh, shikala babason do raba basiti en de basa. Kalaman de rebi siri ala rabandro go shikiri biki siri ala rabambari sotko. We bless you, Lord. We bless you, Lord. We bless you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I feel impressed right now as before we close here, and I don't, I don't even want anyone to tell me what their issue is. I don't want to know. It's just one of those moments. But if anybody needs wisdom, for something in their life, wisdom and understanding and knowledge. I'm just going to lay hands on you if you need that, and you're going to get it, and it'll be a point of contact for you. Maybe even believing for something, and it just is not clicking. But what is it, Lord? It could be something in the natural. It could be a human relationship you just don't understand. Well, you need wisdom. Wisdom's the principal thing. And if that is anybody, you're welcome to come. I don't force you to. I'm just going to lay hands on you, and we'll get some catchers or whatever in case. And, Lord, we just want to thank you, Lord. Let's give the Lord some praise right now. We worship and praise you, Lord. Just use this as a point of contact for wisdom. I believe that when I lay hands on you, God is going to flow into you with his wisdom. He's already in there. But that wisdom, you know, the Bible says, 
in the book of James that if you lack wisdom, let him ask of God, and you're going to get it if you come by faith. So when I lay hands on you, I'm going to believe that God just ministered that to you. And maybe he doesn't tell you right now this second, but maybe in your dream tonight, maybe before you go to bed or when you get up in the morning or when you go home and you're eating your lunch, it dawns on you. So, Lord, we just ask you right now, in the name of Jesus, that you touch Stephanie with your wisdom. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. You minister that wisdom to her in Jesus' name. Spiritual wisdom, supernatural wisdom for her to know how to answer those people, how to, how to answer that problem, whatever it is, in Jesus' name. We thank you, Father, for it. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Lord, I ask you to minister to Brother Paul your wisdom right now, your understanding, your knowledge, and whatever has been troubling him, whatever he doesn't understand. Help him, Lord, to know in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord, you minister to it. Minister that wisdom to him. Thank you, Lord, it will come very nicely, just like velvety smooth wisdom, and it will be coming with joy and peace and making him pleasant in his uh, pleasant ways and peaceful paths. Thank you, Father. We receive that. Hallelujah. And for Brother Dale, we thank you, Lord. I ask you to fill him with your wisdom, your, under, your understanding, and your knowledge in everything he's facing in his life. Maybe it's multiple things. And, Lord, that you would fill him with your joy. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You fill him with your wisdom, with your power, Lord God. Hallelujah. Your ability to know and to see through things and to see things the way that you see them, Father. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Remember, this wisdom is a spiritual thing. It's not, okay, think it through. Got to think it through. You know, the Bible doesn't say, it says to lean not on your own understanding. It says to trust the Lord with all your heart. That means trust the Lord with all your spirit. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for my sister Anne. Lord, I ask that you'd fill her with that wisdom regarding those certain areas that she needs answers in. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, for flowing that into her. We thank you, Father, for your, your wonderful wisdom in those very particular areas of her life. I thank you, Lord. I believe you for it. You minister that to her in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for Brother Rodney. Thank you, Lord, for the wonderful blessing that his family and he are to this church. And Lord, in whatever area that he, he doesn't understand something, Lord God, I ask that you would minister your wisdom to him right now. In the name of Jesus, thank you, Father. We receive that. Oh, we receive it right now. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord, for your wonderful gift of wisdom to us. Oh, we thank you, Jesus. Everyone just lift your hands and worship Father, the Father right now. We thank you, Lord. Every good and every perfect gift comes down from the Father of lights. Oh, we thank you, Lord, for your wisdom. Thank you, Lord, you gave us wisdom to get born again in the first place. I ask you, Lord, to give wisdom to every business leader, every business owner in this church, everybody that runs their own business, whether it's very small or very big. We ask you, Lord, to give us, in the night seasons even, Psalm 16, that his heart will instruct him in the night seasons. That is the man who will not be moved because the Lord is at his right hand. So, Lord God, we ask that the men in this church would rise up and be the men that you've called them to be in Jesus' name. That we would walk in the fear of the Lord and be examples to our families because you called us to be the head of the household. We're the head of the ship. We're the captain. And as the captain goes, so goes the ship. So, Lord God, we ask that you would help us to be men of our word. Help us to be men who do what we do in front of our wives or in front of the church. Also, in the closet or in the private area when sometimes we're just by ourselves. We ask you, Lord God, that you'd help us to guide us with your eye, and that our eyes would only be on the word, that your word would be the apple of our eyes, and that we wouldn't set our eyes on wicked things that cause us to do things that don't please you. And so we want to thank you, Lord, that you're not ministering legalism to us. You're ministering wisdom right now. We thank you, Father, for it in Jesus' name. We thank you, Lord, for ministering to our business people, our homeschool teachers. We've got homeschool teachers in our church and our, and our school teachers, Lord. We ask that, Lord, you'd minister wisdom as they minister to their children and, and other people's children. We ask that, Lord God, your, your, your spirit would flow into that classroom, into that home. In the name of Jesus, everybody said amen. amen. Praise God, I feel good. All right, I hope you feel good too. 
So you guys have a great day. The game shall be starting in about 15 minutes. Thus saith the Lord, and you are all dismissed.